Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another one of these chit chat videos. You guys seem to really like my last one, which was how the beauty community has changed. And I'm gonna link that video down below. But we're gonna do another video very similar to it about does everyone on YouTube deserve a platform? This is a, this is a big one. And I've been really thinking about this. Also, my hair is wet. It's like in the process of drying. So don't mind that. But if you are new here, hi, my name's Anna. I upload four videos every single week talking about all things beauty, and I would love to have you join my channel. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And let's go ahead and get started. So if I don't mention something that I'm using, it will be linked down below in the, it will be listed down below in the description box. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. So I have zoomed up just a little bit here and we're starting out with primer, Too Faced Hangover Primer. I feel like this is just what my skin needs right now. I like totally like cleaned our house today. We zone a lot of sweating. <laughs> oh my, okay. Does this need to be shaken, shaken up? Let's talk about it. Does everyone deserve their platform? Now, I'm not talking about like smaller creators like myself. I'm talking about the people who have millions and millions of followers. You know, the people who have like three million followers or people like David Dobrik who have like 20 million followers. People like I'm blanking on names, James Charles. What does he have, like 24 million? I'm gonna have to pull this up and look it up because I don't know. Oh gosh. It's the people who, when we think about YouTube, who, you know, who kind of are very, very, very well known on the platform, do they deserve their, their following? Okay, James Charles has 24.6 million, wow. That's a lot of people. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about it. So now when we think about YouTubers have this kind of following, almost every single person I've mentioned has been in a scandal, like in some sort of ish situation. Now it's not, you know, your typical little, just like cutesy little drama. Like, no, it's involving like, David Dobrik and James Charles, for example, it's involving crime. Or like Logan Paul, um, how many subscribers does he have? I should know this. <laughs> I should have like done a little bit of research here. Logan Paul has 23 million. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Or like Jake Paul, people like that. That's the kind of people who I'm going to be discussing today. People who have been in scandals, quite frankly, in my opinion, should have ruined their career. Let's talk about David Dobrik first. So David Dobrik ha had a vlog on his channel that included having some very intoxicated young women that under the drinking age be, I don't wanna say the word, involved in something that they didn't want to do, basically. Now, Smoky Glow is a great example of somebody who has really covered this situation, and I definitely recommend going to go check her out. David Dobrik, for like all of 2020 basically, like did not post any vlogs you know, of him hanging out with his friends, and he said he was gonna do that when like quarantine, you know, was kind of over, and you know, he really did not post, really did not. And I thought that was kind of interesting of him because I feel like a lot of his what's, his content was really centered around hanging out with friends and stuff. So you'd really see a lot of like TikToks and stuff of him hanging out with his friends, but you literally wouldn't see a vlog, which was I thought was kind of like redundant. These girls came forward and they called him out on it. So of course he made like terrible apology videos took like a couple months off and came back with vlogs. And you know what? People are acting like nothing has happened. People are loving his content. And I just looked recently and he's getting millions and millions of views on these videos. And as someone who had that on the internet for a couple years, does he deserve that? 
does he deserve to have this kind of platform where he's making a lot of money although he says he does not make a lot of money on youtube because he uses copyrighted music let me just like pull up his channel for reference this guy has 18 million subscribers plus and i guarantee you it's growing every day he's getting seven to eight million views a video unreal just unreal he has a lot of violence in his videos he has a lot of swearing, a lot of like derogatory comments, and yet he is be he is like, you know, was I guess <laughs> before this whole thing happened, he was on like the Kids Choice Awards. He was you know doing all these different things. So like coming back here, he lost so many sponsors. Absolutely, I think he lost almost all of his sponsors, which. My guess, I don't really know how much he actually makes being a YouTuber. My guess is he makes millions a year. My guess is that he kind of heavily relied on these sponsored videos, especially for like YouTube. He relied on these sponsors so that he could make a living doing his vlogs and stuff. I mean, I watched a video on SeatGeek and like just kind of like the math and stuff behind it. He was making lots of money with that SeatGeek sponsorship. But now he's back. He's back. He's acting basically like nothing happened. Like he didn't almost kill his friend in that weird accident. Acting like nothing happened, right? Does he deserve this platform back? Does he deserve these millions and millions of views? Does he deserve these sponsorships back? As a woman, I would say no. I don't think he does. Because I think when you have something like that online, and I don't know the full details of everything, but I think one of the girls messaged one of the people involved and asked to take that vlog down, and he didn't originally. Does somebody like that deserve a platform? I really don't think so. I mean, I used to kind of watch him every once in a while and stuff. You know, I followed him on TikTok. I thought he was really funny. And you know what? Looking back, a lot of his content is just so inappropriate so vile in a way and i just don't understand how that is a kid's choice award i wanted to mention that i use the anastasia magic touch concealer the Too faced born this way powder and the physician's formula butter bronzer and i'm next going to go in with the jacqueline cosmetics rouge affair blush palette i'm so excited I'm going to use the shade Admirer today. No, I don't, I choose not to watch his content anymore. 7.8 million plus people are giving him this platform to just come back on and to continue making money off of. I am choosing not to. Another person that really comes to mind with this situation is James Charles. I mean, earlier this year, he was involved in a scandal where he was messaging underage boys. What, it, what even is that? Like, no, he made this apology video which again smoky glow really covered it nicely he made this apology video where he you know was basically not even taking responsibility he was more of you know blaming well you know they didn't tell me their age they lied about their age blah 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 the last time i checked you're the adult in this situation it's not their, this 15 year old boy's fault is it not? No. The problem I have with that is that he, you know, took some time off to quote unquote reflect on the situation. Now, honestly, these are like criminal charges. Like this is like, like, the, like he broke the law. He broke the law and I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not because you know, going through that whole process of, you know, contacting the authorities and stuff, that can be very traumatic on somebody. And especially like a teenager, that can be very traumatic. So I understand why, you know, maybe no victims or these people that James Charles has contacted, I kind of understand why none of them went to the police. You don't want the public eye on you. You're obviously gonna be making news once this whole thing comes out and all these news sites are going to be covering you do you really want that no i wouldn't want that absolutely not i'm gonna take a sugar rush this is the tarte sister brand 
Velvet Liquid Lipstick in the shade Frosting. My complaint here is that he took all this time off. I think it was like two months or something. It wasn't very long, you know? I would have expected a little bit more time. And then he was posting on Instagram. So I'm like, oh, I miss you guys. I miss you guys. Almost like as a way to like make you feel bad for him. Like, oh, James had to take this time off. Yeah, he had to take this time off because he was in deep shit, to be quite honest with you. He really was. Getting a lot of hate comments, he was getting a lot of hate on the internet in general. I would have taken that time off too if I were him. But if I were him, I would have never put myself in that situation. Okay, <laughs> long story short there. I should do eyebrows next. So when he comes back, he, you know, does this little video explaining blah blah blah, kind of keeps his same narrative of like saying like, well, I'm desperate. Kind of like, oh, poor me kind of thing. There's no poor you in this situation in general. You know, there really is not. So he comes back and now he's uploading like nothing has happened. You know, he's uploading. I think he's doing once a week. I, I don't subscribe to him anymore. I did unsubscribe from him a while, like over a year ago, I think. Just honestly, because a lot of his videos just don't cater to my interest. You know, scrolling like way back on his content, you know, he was getting 8 million views, 12 million views, 19 million views, another 8 million, 7, 14, 11, 13. And when he came back, you know, he when he came back after his like an open conversation video, I'm just looking at my phone for reference. Now it's one to two million views. And I think that speaks volumes. People don't want to give him the attention people don't want him to want to give him the the click or you know or the view myself included i don't want to watch his videos anymore you know i don't want to support him and what i find interesting in all of this and this is like something i really wanted to touch on here is that youtube whenever something big like this happens um happened with shane dawson it happened with david dobrik uh who else has happened with? it happened with james charles too where they come forward and they say, you know, we are de demonetizing his channel, blah, 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 but then re-monetize it in like a month. So I remember this, when James Charles got demonetized, you know, there, I saw an article, it might have been from Business Insider or something like that. I don't really just like rely my, my, my news information off like blogs and stuff. That's just not who I am. So I really do go off the the head honchos <laughs> and stuff. So Business Insider reported that he was make, losing like millions and millions of dollars off of being demonetized. You know, Shane Dawson, same kind of thing. He lost millions and millions of dollars. Now, these people are all monetized again. David Dobrik monetized once more. James Charles has ads rolling at the beginning and end of his videos. Why is YouTube just forgiving this situation and just pretending it never happened. If they broke community guidelines, why are you forgiving them? If anybody else was doing this, if any sort of like smaller creator was doing this, they would be demonetized and that's it. But since these people are literally in some way the face of the YouTube community, now these people are people that you really think of when you're thinking of YouTube. When you think of YouTube, you think of these really popular people. YouTube wants to make money off them. We see it right here, right now. Oh my, I just tried doing the ink stain. We're gonna have to really blend this out. Oh. <laughs> but when YouTube thinks of these people, you know, they wanna make money off them. I mean, let's talk about it. 7.8 million people watch David Dobrik's most recent vlog. They wanna make money off him. They really do. Brows look hideous today, please don't judge. James Charles, they wanna make money off of him. And that's why I think that these people get de like re-monetized in a way so quickly. It's all about money for YouTube and for you know a Fortune 500 com company like Google who owns YouTube. I get that, but at the same time, these people actually need to be held accountable because I feel like once you are getting the kind of views once more like David Dobrik is and like Shane Dawson did and all these things, 
YouTube does get a cut of your ad revenue. It doesn't matter in the eyes of YouTube <laughs> that David Dobrik had a vlog that contained SA on there. As long as they're making money, it doesn't matter, right? Shane Dawson, who had freaking so many inappropriate, racist, terrible jokes on his channel, you know, got demonetized for a few months. We're just gonna kind of slip it under the rug. We're gonna get them back in there because why the heck not, right? We gotta make money off of them somehow. We're using the Hocus Pocus palette in light of um, ColourPop announcing round two. I have not seen it, it is Sunday to the 19th today. I'm nervous and I'm excited because I really want that collection. But anyways, let's go into On Toast. And honestly, I really do think that YouTube will do anything you know, to be making money off of people like James Charles and David Dobrik and Logan Paul. That's another good one, Logan Paul. You know, literally got off of Google Preferred back in 2017 with the suicide forest. That was a whole thing. We're not gonna get into that because we all know what happened. Um, he was interviewed on like Good Morning America and all this stuff, he was given such a platform. But interesting thing about him is that he, turned his like he turned his idea around i think he now more caters to adults he used to be a very child like family friendly kind of youtuber he had vlogs and stuff and he had like merch i don't know if he still does all that stuff now he's into like boxing and he's has a podcast now and he does m more adult things maybe that is for the best you know maybe he really showed that you know he he learned from the stuff that he did he learned from his mistakes and he did what he could to kind of reinvent himself in a way and i think that that is kind of good so i'm going to go into bewitched right here which is a dark green for me personally now that i've spewed the facts it's time for my opinion and this brush is not working for me not today so you know me thinking about you know i'm i'm just shocked how fast people like after these kinds of scandals how fast james charles came back to the platform after something that people can go to jail for i i just don't understand i don't think he deserves his 24 plus million subscribers i just don't I mean, I cannot even imagine 24 million people subscribed to my channel. Keep in mind though, only about five to 10% of his subscribers watch his content, enough said. But I mean, let's, for example, 1.5 million people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. I could never imagine getting views like that. I, I just I just can't. And maybe it's just cause like I am like so small <laughs> in the YouTube realm here. But I just don't think that one should be a I just don't think one should be abusing that kind of platform. You know, and in James Charles's kind of instance, I, I bet that the fame and like the money and the attention and everything like that, I bet it gets to you. Like thinking about myself, I, I think it would get to me in a way. You know, I'm married, so I would not be messaging underage boys, <laughs> but you know, I would, I probably would have a bigger ego over it. I guarantee you I would at this point. So, I, I bet I would have an ego. Maybe it would be something toxic. With that kind of ego, maybe you kind of lapse your judgment, think, you know, I'm so-and-so, I make millions of dollars, you know, filming makeup videos. I'm pretty awesome. Let's go in with a little bit of this Super Shock Shadow from ColourPop. This is Beauty and the Beast. I reviewed these on Monday and I'm gonna link them down below for you. Such an awesome, awesome, awesome product here. I just don't think somebody who has done something like that deserves a platform. Because if we think about if the everyday person like that did that and their victims came forward, 
that person would probably be in jail and they would be on the sex offender list. That would prevent them from getting pretty much any sort of good, I, I'm saying good in quotations here, but any sort of like, like reliable job that is gonna help you retire someday. That sort of record would follow them forever because if you looked them up online, you'd probably see news articles. If you looked up the circuit court, you could find it online. This kind of thing follows everyday people like that for the rest of their lives because they made one stupid mistake. And honestly, I think that should follow James Charles because it wasn't just like a one time like, oh crap, I messed up. It was he messaged multiple people. Although I think in all, in light of all of this, I don't think I am gonna do a montage. I think I'm just gonna like talk and put this on. But I think in light of everything, what? It's important to talk about the people who absolutely deserve their platform and more. Um, a really good example, Kelly Gooch. She has like 80,000, I think. I don't really keep track of that stuff. <laughs> but I think she has about 80, 81. And she is absolutely phenomenal. I love her so much. Another one is Smoky Glow. She just hit 400K. She's awesome. Um, Jen Loves or Jen Loves Reviews. She is awesome. She is just under 300K right now. So definitely go check her out and subscribe to her. Like I think in, in light of all of this negativity, there is still so much good platform. There really is. There's so many wonderful people that you can watch who haven't been in scandals like this. And look what I did. Oh my gosh, what did I do? There are so many wonderful people to watch who have not been in criminal scandals like this. And I think we, as a community, need to start giving those people more attention. We're just gonna attempt to fix this. Like, there are so many wonderful people and a couple people don't need to ruin it for you. Heck no. I think we just need to, you speak volumes. You as a viewer speak volumes with your clicks. Your clicks speak louder than any sort of comment. If you just don't even engage with a video of somebody like that, don't hate watch, don't leave a hate comment, don't dislike, because that is still engagement. Engagement gives these people money. <laughs> so what I mean here, you think somebody doesn't deserve their platform, you can't, it's really hard for you to watch James Charles now or David Dobrik now or Shane Dawson now. Just don't click on their videos. Don't like them, don't dislike them, don't do anything. Because that speaks more volumes than any sort of hate comment out there. It really does. I mean, look at that. Look at James's views. And this is not like a hateful video in any way. This is me saying that I think some people on YouTube don't deserve their platforms for the things that they have done. I mean, look at James's views. They've plummeted. I mean, 1.4 million, that's, that's huge. That's awesome. But compared to what he's getting before, it's a cut. It's, there's a cut in views. That speaks volumes to edits in itself. And of course, if you like watching any of these people, I should have said this before, but if you like watching any of these people, continue to watch them. If you think someone doesn't deserve their platform, speak with your clicks. Don't watch them. Don't engage with them. Don't subscribe to them. It's all about focusing on people that you truly want to watch and that you think deserve the love and the likes and the comments. That's all that matters. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, more kind of like just talks on stuff, let me know in the comments down below. I really enjoy uh, watching these types of videos. Therefore, I like making them. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.